out in the woods still. Still? Still, still. guys. Still. It's but like we, we never leave. It's like we, yeah, it's like we never leave. We have 200 videos on Facebook, on YouTube, and like three of them have woods in the background. <laughs> I feel like we're here more often than not, though. This is a nice place. You know? This is a nice place. Yeah, it is a nice place. So yeah. what are you thinking? Well, you know, there's a lot going on. And we get a lot of questions. And we get a lot of questions about stuff. I get a crap ton of them, some of my personal stuff. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how close you guys are following stuff. You probably still have friends that are out there doing some of this junk. Yeah. But it's scary times, and, and a lot of people are nervous. You know, it was funny the other day, North Korea did their little rocket test. Rackets. Which, they weren't even big ones, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did we respond? We tested a Trident, and, and then I think a Minuteman. Yeah. Ten minutes after their launch, that Minuteman went off. Ooh. And then they uh, did a trident off the coast of Canaveral yesterday as well. That splashed down. It's going to Africa? Yeah, it splashed Near, down off the coast of Africa. Not to Africa, but towards. <laughs> 11,000 kilometers that thing traveled to splash Jeez. down. And uh, I don't know if Trump did that as a response to their test or what. But So North Korea is not playing ball no more, which no surprise there. You mm -hmm. know, we all kind of saw that coming. Um, but it cracks me up how people act like it's a non-issue with North Korea. They're... Definitely dangerous. You know, I don't, have you guys heard we seized two North Korean ships in the last two days? Yes. Yeah. Cargo yep. ships. Yep. One full of coal. And I don't know what the other one had on it yet. Um, but that's not going to make them happy. And it, I just read a thing yesterday where now Putin, he is actually propping them up. He's, he's doing things back door for North Korea. And he's doing things in our own back door in Venezuela. So they're, they're down there monkeying around still. They, Venezuela allowed Russia to open up an attack helicopter base school in Venezuela. Oh, wow. So in response to that, Brazil is going to let us put a base down there. And we already have assets in Colombia and stuff. So, you know, this, this geopolitical stuff, when you look at it, it gets kind of scary, all this, you know, one-upmanship that everybody's up to. And it's a lot closer to America mm. than, than in a, a lot of other places. Yeah, you know. it's not it, like 10,000 miles away. Especially now, you know. Yeah. North Korea used to just be in North Korea. It was, you know, really far away. Russia was really far away. Well, now Russia's in South America. Um, yep. Not to mention, the, you know, the Border Patrol, it doesn't make the news, the stuff that they find. The prayer rugs, the Chinese and Russian military rations that are found along, packages that are found along the border. Um, there's stuff going on on our border more than just uh, illegal South Americans trying to get here to, to sponge up social services. Um, those are kind of concerning. And then Iran. Now we're back to Iran. They said they're going to kick off their enrichment again. And we've I, moved. I think that one was only a matter of time. Well, I mean, they've never stopped. Right. But it was a, it was a uh, let's say, in secret we never stopped. But now it's like, ah, whatever. It just... Well, I, but then what, what Israel say, as soon as Iran said they were going to start enriching again, and Israel came right out and said, we will not allow you to have a nuclear weapon. <laughs> and they've proven in the past what they'll do about that. But that's just going to cause that much more trouble. So Trump took away all the waivers on Iranian oil. And so now Iran's threatening to close down the strait. If they try that, 33% of the world's oil flows through there. That's going to start another sandbox fight. Yeah, yeah that's pretty significant. You know, um, and, you know, we received that credible intelligence from Israel about the potential for Iranian strikes against our personnel and assets. But did you notice when that intel was passed to us in the middle of that Hezbollah rocket attack where they launched like almost a thousand rockets into Israel and only killed one Israeli. So their KD ratio is pretty bad. But... um. But Israel then passes that information to us to, hey, the Iranians are fixing to hit some of your people. So what do we do? We move in a carrier strike group and a bunch of B-52s. Mm -hmm. So it makes me wonder, is it, was that legit or was Israel looking for some backup? Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. Israel, you know, they're, they're an ally of ours, but they're also very famous for letting us do their work for them. You know, sure. it's easier to spend our blood and treasure than it is to spend theirs. And I'm not knocking them. I'm not anti-Israeli, but... Let's be realistic about what's going on. So, just a lot happening in the world, you know. Um, not to mention on the domestic scene. What are we? How many Democratic candidates are we up to now? Forty-eight or 
50? I don't remember. Somewhere around there. <laughs> it's like Jeez. every other day there's a new Democratic candidate coming out. Um, but the news never tells us how many Republicans are running yet. Yeah. I don't even know what the number is. Yeah. Uh, but every other day there's another Democrat coming out. And it's funny because we're watching them eat their own at the moment. Well, I think it's going to be a reverse of, of two years ago. Uh, I'll say 2016. Uh, where you had a lot of Republicans right. spending a lot of funds trying to become the primary candidate mm -hmm. um, that we thought for, for quite a while was going to, to hurt Trump just mm -hmm. because they had spent so much time and so much assets yep. trying to, to, to win the Republican nomination instead of the primary. The yeah. Prim yeah. You know? And so I, I think the coin has flipped this time for Democrat, and it's going to be a, a bunch of in-house fighting. It, it, it's going to be a slugfest for the Democrats, I think, leading up to the next election. And, and the, what's, what's funny about it is they're all trying to one-up each other on how far left they can go. How much more socialist, communist-esque can we get? And, <laughs> you know, like that, I mean, that does cater to the far left base, but, yeah. and there are very few of these people left, but you're old. Blue blood Democrats don't like that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And there's few of those left today. They're they're still they're still out there, but they're fewer in number. Um, I don't have a problem with good old fashioned Democrats. It's these new, fangled, well progressives. Yeah. The, anyone that hangs the term progressive on their name, I have a problem with. Um, they think that means we're moving forward and all this stuff, and then and it's, yeah, they're but they're marching off into a different sunset than the one I want to go to. Sure. So, you know, I just like good old common sense. Yes. What, whatever They're party right it is, <laughs> common sense, things that make sense and have logic behind them, like I like that. See, I neither, don't like things that don't. Neither party represents me wholly. Right. There's yeah. some things in the Democratic Party I agree with. There's things in the Republican Party I agree with. But when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm more libertarian in that I'm liberty-minded. So with liberty comes responsibility. I talk about this a lot. And it's basically... You live your life, and I'm going to leave you alone. You yeah. let me live my life, I'm going to leave you alone. Live and let live. You know, there was, a, there was a thing the other day that I was reading. Something like 92 or 93% of all the laws on the books in this country, federal, state, local, whatever, the victim of all those laws is only the state. How can something be a crime when there really isn't a victim? So the state steps in to make itself the victim of everything. Oh, ah. Think about it. Now, if I punch you in the nose, you're the victim. Right, right. For a minute, then I might turn into the victim. Sure. You know, that's Possibly. how that fight goes. But, like, non-violent crimes or, or, or crimes against property, there is no victim. Mm -hmm. All right, take drugs, for example. Who's the victim? Oh, well, society at large is. Well, really, who's the victim? The idiot buying the drugs is really the victim. Yeah. You know, but that's the one that will go to jail, too. Um so it's an interesting dichotomy when you when you look at it that way that the state, and and, and that's what leftists want. They want the state to be there for making all our decisions. And and when I say leftists, I'm talking far left guys, not you people watching these videos. I mean the nut jobs. <laughs> <laughs> let's let us let us go back to, to to Venezuela just a little bit because yeah. I think that's interesting to me. It's uh, interesting to me because it's so close to home. Yeah, you know that's. Well, I think Gallardo. Guido. Guido. Yeah, he he um, he messed up. He played his hand too early when he, when he came out calling for the military to back him, and and pretty much, well, very few guys came out to back him. Um, so Maduro's got the military firmly in hand. Um, I don't know. Did you see yesterday that they arrested the vice president yeah. of their, like their Congress? Yeah. Did you guys see that? They went to arrest him. He got in his car and went and get out. So they brought a crane and picked his car up and took it away with him in it, Jeez. which I thought was hilarious. You know, have tow trucks. I mean, um, it, it. I mean, Venezuela is, is interesting to me, you know, because this was pretty much the most prosperous country in South America oh, 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, by a long shot prosperous. Right. I mean, yeah. A, a You know, a, a gorgeous, prosperous yes. city um, that is now fighting to survive almost in a lot of scenarios and it's going to get worse before it gets better but i think that's one of the things with with regards to america i, I think a lot of people at times think it takes you know a century for for issues to really bring a country down 
I mean, you guys have been overseas. You know, it doesn't take centuries. It, oh, it, no. It's a short period of time that takes almost a century in order to, to rebuild from sometimes, yeah. you know. Um, but it doesn't take long. And no. That descent, that descent is quick. I yeah. Mean, it can, and, and two, the more, I don't know if advanced is the right word I'm looking for here, maybe prosperous or, or whatever, the more advanced and prosperous a society is, in my opinion, the faster that transition can happen. Because you look at the people of Venezuela, they're hardy people, you know. They, they did have a, a boom cycle where life was great and was good for them, but they weren't that far removed from the old days, you mm. know, like a lot of South Americans live. And so, yeah, it's hit them hard and those people are suffering, but probably not as bad as, say, your average American would, like the kids we were discussing just moments ago. Yeah. How they would be affected by this. Uh, and, 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 you know, did you see that um, Code Pink occupied the Venezuelan embassy in D.C. the other day? No. Yes. So Code Pink occupied the embassy to protest the fact that... Tell them what that is in case they don't know. Code Pink... Um, well, my definition is just a bunch of leftist lunatics, so look up Code Pink. I'm not a fan of theirs. But they did it to protest the fact that we had turned off power and water to the embassy. And so they're all over the Internet saying, this is horrible. They've turned off the power and the water to these poor people here. And the replies on Twitter and stuff were awesome because they're like, yeah, just like the rest of Venezuela is having to live. You know, now these people know what it's like for the rest of the Venezuelans who are doing the same thing. No power, no water, you know. They were trying to make a point, and it just went really badly for them. Yeah. <laughs> because those, those folks down there, they're still having power issues. Water is a major issue yeah. in Venezuela, a huge issue, which, because it is the basis of life mm-hmm. for us, you know, so water is a primary concern, um, and they're having a hard, hard time getting it, very hard time getting it for some people. Um, and then the government, you know, they control the power, they control the water, they control everything. And did you see that CNN anchor the other day that was talking about the riots in Venezuela and he's like private firearm ownership is illegal in Venezuela so nobody has guns only the army has guns and so they have the power and we're like yeah you just spoke the whole reason we have a second amendment mm-hmm. you yeah. just validated yeah. it you know on national TV you didn't realize what he had done but <laughs> he just validated the second amendment um, and because those people can't fight back yeah they have no recourse what are you going to do no recourse so, yeah, the world's a messed up place, but it always is. It's always a messed up place. Um, but I think you guys talking about that and specifically uh, you kind of starting the conversation of it doesn't take that long for it to happen. And it doesn't take one major catastrophic thing to happen. Like there can be a, oh, no. a slip that slides really fast and... I think probably all of us here and a lot of the people watching, that's why we train and that's why we have yeah. food stores and those types of things. I don't think any of us have any dreams of grandeur about that being, I mean, you can turn on the TV and look and see it's horrible life for those people. Oh, yeah. Um, our intent is just to make it more bearable by doing the things that we do with training and uh, kind well, of preparing and two, food stores and those types of things. We prep, too, not necessarily for that whole major catastrophic thing but for the little ones yeah like hurricanes and snowstorms and stuff because one of the things i like to tell people is if you're prepared then when help finally arrives for whatever's going on you're not the burden and right. on that system yeah. that help can go to other people who need yeah. it because yeah you know it's like fema comes to town after hurricanes and so it cracks me up when you see them the long line of cars where they're handing you your gallon of water and your bag of ice and i just laugh every time i see these you know People are lined up waiting on them. That's FEMA's help. You know, I, I can produce all that at home. Even when my power's out, I'm good to go. And I don't have to get in that line. I don't have to ask for their service. They can give that to somebody else who needs it. Um, just being able to take care of yourself and not be the burden. To me, that's yep. a big deal. Absolutely. Not be the burden. So. Any other thing we want to go over? I don't know. You guys got anything? Anything you want to talk about? Pitch? No, I mean, that, that was a good closeout to it just because... The, the other thing that I, I do truly believe is nobody is prepared all the time for everything. Right. Oh, and so, be. like, the fact that FEMA exists and they help and they do that, like, that's a great thing. Not yeah. knocking it. No. But if if we took it more into our own hands and just about everywhere else I've ever been deployed to, that's how it was. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and there was even times where we had to rely on them. I, was, I just did an a interview with South Magazine, and we are kind of talking about the same stuff, and he asked me, are you, so you like, uh, I know it's kind of macabre, or are you like a doomsday prepper? I'm like, I, honestly, no, I don't see it that way. I seen how quickly things can go south, and I saw the value in being able to at least meet your basic needs. Yep. And I just, I'm a realist. Right. I know that these things yeah. can happen. There's still people, I had a student, a couple weeks ago that had just gotten back from Puerto Rico, still people without water, mm -hmm. still people without power, especially in the mountain regions. And do you think for a million years they would go, oh, wow, I can't believe it. it's almost been a year now and I still have no power. But humans are very flexible and adaptable. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you don't at least foresee these things as a possibility, your mindset is already screwed from the beginning mm -hmm. and everything's going to be worse. Yeah, the people that this is America and that'll never happen here. Um, Look at any of the hurricanes, the the, the ice storms, snowstorms. They, they happen all the damn time. Now, do they last long? No, not necessarily. We do try to respond and get there. Um, like you just said, though, there's some Puerto Ricans that would disagree with you about his help coming. You know. You know. Can you tell me a time though when help is there when you need it? <laughs> help is always there after I need well, it. Well, all right. You know I mean? That leads right into something you know? that I like to tell everybody too. You are your own first responder. That's right. Because you are there when whatever went down went down. Everybody else that's coming has to come right. to there. So you are your own first responder. And that goes for everything as far as self-defense, medical, I mean, everything, you know. Yeah, absolutely. None of us, none of us are truly self-reliant. And, and, I, and I argue with a lot of people who say they're self-sufficient because I could disassemble their <laughs> philosophy in a blink of an eye as far as self-sufficiency goes. Sure. But what we want to do is, is move closer to self-sufficient, right. to be more self-sufficient. I mean, none of us will ever be self-sufficient yeah, unless... It takes a village. Yeah, it does. It takes a village. No no one guy can be so completely self-sufficient um, unless you live in a Stone Age existence and who the hell wants to do that? <laughs> right. but, but, uh, but moving closer to it, you know, so that we're not the burden on society when bad things happen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really my primary goal. I don't want to be waiting in lines. I don't want to have to have my hand out. Mm -hmm. And it may come to that at some point. Sometimes that's more dangerous than the actual event. Yeah, yeah, yeah boy. Yeah. People don't, I tell people this. Yes, people, humans are good natured generally, I would say, but when... Until it's Black Friday. <laughs> so your best friend at church will stab you in the face to, eat, to feed his kids. Yes, he will. I say, eat his kids. That'd be, that's not happening. <laughs> well, he'll stab you in the face if you're trying to eat his kids. <laughs> For sure. That's what I've seen across the spectrum yeah and i try to remember that because sometimes you have to make tough choices and well and and that's, that brings up another thing a lot of people say i will never do right. i will never <laughs> steal i will i will never do this i will never do that you know like you just said if, if if you look at your children and they are starving and the guy across the fence is grilling steaks yeah mm. You're going to go at least have a conversation with them. And depending on how that goes, other things are going to happen probably. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, never discount what you're capable of. And, and like you said, people are generally good. I take the opposite end of that. All people are base animals, in my opinion. It just depends on their level of desperation as to how they're going to yep. act. Right now we're not desperate. So right. we're all, well, we can get along. We, can all sit here. we live in Disneyland compared to other places. For, yeah, for we real. do. Now, if, <laughs> if, if the four of us had been in the woods for seven days fending for ourselves, you know, and, and somebody rolled a McDonald's hamburger down this lane, there'd be a hell of a <laughs> yeah. fight come off. You know, I mean, one of us is going to get it. You know, I mean, but because, again, it's desperation and, and, and your level of comfort. So um, just moving closer to that self-sufficiency thing is all we got to do. Not be the burden. That's the one for me. Yeah, that's you a good know. point. I agree. Uh, any other points, comments, concerns, questions, rebuttals, arguments? Yeah. yeah. This is uh, just kind of our little closer here with um, – Joel and Matt from American Survival Co. Um, we've had these guys out for a couple days shooting videos and stuff. They're awesome to hang with. They're good people. They're like-minded people, which is how you can meet more like-minded people. Go attend a class with them. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody there will be kind of thinking like you do. Yep, that's a fact. So absolutely. You got any class dates of when things are coming soon? You got? Yeah, let what? me talk about one really cool thing we got coming yeah, up. Go for it. Uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th, next weekend, right? Uh, Flintlock, we're partnered with Flint and Steel Critical Skills Group. And there's an annual event called Flintlock. Uh, this one's in the Ozarks uh, in, in northwest Arkansas. We'll be hosting it. 
and there's going to be a bunch of different instructors coming from across the U.S. Uh, Nicola Palin, uh, the gray the bearded Green Beret, Joel and I will be there. A bunch of other really top-notch instructors. Gray beard? Yeah, he'll be there. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. He he owns uh, Flint and Steel. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's I did not know that. All right. Yeah. Cool. Super Dude. good guy. Um, yeah. Philip Liebel, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Cowie, Cowie, Justin Cook. Justin Cook, yeah. Just a ton of super knowledgeable folks, all kind of coming from different regions uh, across the United States. So they've got uh, different knowledge of different environments, but also kind of specialties, Nicole and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the plant medicine and stuff like that. All of us may know a little bit, but everybody's kind of got their own little specialty. And so coming together in one place where you can come and get knowledge from all those people instead of traveling to all these different schools. Uh, and it's really, really reasonably priced. I, I, I think it's 129 per person for, for that three-day event. Um, Which is nothing. At, for that's that less time, than, that's less than a night in a hotel. Yeah. Think about it, you know? I mean, uh, free camping uh, there yeah. on site. Uh, and, you know. and two... You know the people he's talking about that are coming together. The fellowship of hanging out with all those people. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Of of you know just the sidebar chats that happen and and to be able to, and to be able to meet these like a lot of these people you see on YouTube like Nicole. A lot of people watch her on TV. Mm -hmm. They watch her on YouTube and stuff. But to meet Nicole and and hang out with her, she's a genuine person. She's a real sweetheart. Extremely knowledgeable. Um, I take her on my team any day because yeah. of her knowledge. Um, but to be able to meet these guys in person, hang out with them, and you know that's how you make friendships too. Yep, you, know, you stay absolutely. in touch with these with these folks. You know, I had a, a guy call me the other day. He was in town from North Carolina. And he's a reader of my books, and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm not far away. Can, can we get hell? Yeah, where do you want to meet?" Yeah, ran out, sat down for an hour or two with him, and, and we talked and chatted. You know, and and it's funny. He's like, "Oh, I, I thought you'd be a little bit different." You know, no, I'm just like you see. You know, really. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, because and and when when you go to these classes and hang out with these guys, you'll see that they're they're just like us. They're like everybody else. Oh, they're yeah. Got good knowledge, awesome skills, and a passion to share it. So. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be a really good event. We're going to be giving away lots of cool stuff. We've got some really great sponsors. Um, so really hope to see you guys there. For your, I mean, the bang for your buck and the value on that uh, is really, really hard to beat. So if you can make it to that, it's going to be a really good time. And, again, that's the 17th, 18th, and 19th of uh, this month so right around the corner uh, get registered at americansurvivalco.com and if you decide to do that uh, you can use the code ASC10 and uh, get a discount on the, the ticket so we have single day passes multi day whatever uh, there's an option there for everybody so hope to see you guys out there alright guys I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time be safe